Well, it's good to see you again. Uh, we're going to take a look at geologic timescale within this video. Uh, geologic timescale takes a look at the Earth's history from when it first formed 4.6 billion years ago uh, today and breaks it up into chunks to make it a little bit easier to deal with. Just like uh, years broken up into months and months are broken up into weeks and weeks are broken up into, today, into days and even that can be broken down into hours and minutes and seconds. The geologic uh, timescale, the beginning of, uh, of when Earth first formed today, gets broken up uh, only not in terms of months, weeks, or days. We call them the bigger chunks. We call them eons. And then the next size chunks get called eras. And then the next size chunk gets called periods. And then some of those can uh, get broken up into uh, epochs. So we're mostly going to deal with eons, eras, and periods. That's what I care the most about. Uh, when we take a look at this, uh, 4.6 billion years ago to um, about 500 million years ago, so almost all of Earth's history, uh, life forms were fairly simple. Uh, and so we get this pre-Cambrian uh, time period, this pre-Cambrian eon. And then about 500 million years ago, 540 million years ago, there's this great explosion of life. And so uh, in terms of the variety of types of life. And so this pre-Cambrian uh, eon uh, comes to an end. And then we get this next chunk, the Phanerozoic um, eon begins. Then that one, the Phanerozoic can get broken into some terms that you probably are more familiar with. The Paleozoic is the first chunk. The Mesozoic is the next chunk, and the one that we're in today is the Cenozoic. Okay. Then you can take those and you can break those down into periods. And we have a variety of periods, the Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, and so on. The ones that you're probably most familiar with are the me within the Mesozoic, you get the Triassic, Jurassic, and the Cretaceous. And then you get the Cenozoic uh, getting divided all the way down into uh, the ones that we are, we're at today, where you get the Quaternary uh, period, and even that gets divided into the epochs, the Pleistocene and the Holocene. So that's kind of how the, the that's how the divisions get broken up. Um, again, they get those time these lines are drawn not just randomly, but at uh, major events. For example, if we take a look here at the uh, end of the Paleozoic, uh, the Permian uh, period. Right here, this was one of the largest, was the largest, about to 90, 95% of all species of animals went extinct uh, in this time period. Not on the same day, but over a period of time right in here. If we go a little bit farther up, the Cretaceous, the Mesozoic uh, era and the Cretaceous period, right? They're coming in right here. Uh, and that was, again, a big extinction. This is 50, 70% of uh, types of uh, life went extinct in this time or frame. Uh, this is when the dinosaurs and others um, uh, died out. So far, the Cenozoic seems to be going strong. We'll see what kind of major event uh, brings it into that someday if it does. So this is taking a look at some of the time periods. If we take a look and we uh, look at how that spaced out across the calendar, so to give you a little bit more frame of reference, um, 4.6 billion years ago, if we equate that to January 1st, and if we call today December 31st, then when we divide that up, we can see that if the Earth formed on January 1st, the oldest known rocks that we see today are right in here, forming at the end of January, beginning of February. Those are still around today. We can find some of those. Uh, so there's some chemical evidence of of life right around March 12th, having formed, you know, a couple months in. So that's a you know, two and a half months after the Earth formed, you know, you know, on this scale. Uh, but we don't really see the oldest fossils until the beginning of April. Those are the the ones where we see them preserved. These are really simple single cell uh, creatures. If we go down a little bit farther, we go through the rest of April, May, June, July. It takes us all the way down and into August. And in August, we see the first eukaryotes. Okay, about uh, middle of August, August 17th or so. 
Uh, first multicellular organisms don't show up until September, the beginning of September, we start seeing some algae. It takes us until the first week of October before we start seeing animals that you might recognize as animals, things like things that have shells and limbs. Uh, if we're looking for a vertebrae, you got to go all the way down to um, see November 12th and 13th was the first animals with shells and limbs. Uh, November 26th, now you're getting some creatures with backbones. We find the first land plants. The end of the month there in November, November 30th. The first land animals, right about December 1st, so in the last month of the calendar year there. The dinosaurs finally go extinct, December 26th. And then on the last day of the year, one hour before midnight, we start seeing Homo sapiens, we start seeing humans, and then we get on the moon a quarter second before midnight, before the year ends. So if you take the year and you, um, let me redo that, and you break it up into um, uh, a calendar, humans don't really come along until almost the end. We're fairly recent newcomers on this. So if we take a look at what should be uh, in your notes, we talked about a couple of examples of uh, major extension, extinctions at the end of the Paleozoic, uh, Permian, uh, at the end of the Mesozoic, and uh, that being the Cretaceous period. Uh, I draw a time scale. I just showed you. You know, you can pause the video so that you can get that done. The Mesozoic, those are the middle animals. The Cenozoic, we're looking at today. Okay, uh, and then we'll take care of the sequence map uh, in class. I'll put on the board what I want you to have down there. Okay, so geologic time scale, taking a look at how time gets divided up and where certain events fit in.